Our topic for today is resting in Jesus. In this video, I will teach you how to rest in Jesus and to stay or abide within Him. Matthew 11, 28 and 29, Jesus said, Come to me, all you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is the rest from sin. God wants us to be free from the burdens of sin. And if I come to Christ, He is the one that can do that for me. Listen to verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. What is this yoke? Well, a yoke was used for two oxen that were pulled together on the same piece of equipment behind them. So Christ is saying, let's pull together. Let it not just be me. Let it not just be you. Let us pull together. Jesus explains this in another way in John 15, 4 and 5. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. A branch cannot bear fruit without the vine. And Christ says that he is the vine. He is the one that gives the nourishment, the nutrients, towards the bronze, but the bronze still has to do something. The bronze has to bear fruit. Therefore, the bronze needs to be connected to the vine for it to bear fruit. Jesus goes so far to say, without me, you can do nothing. This bearing of fruit, this you can do nothing that Jesus spoke of, obviously has to do with our spiritual walk, our reflecting of his character. For us to do this, we need to abide. For us to find rest for our souls, we need to come to Him to find rest. We need to take upon His yoke and pull together, cooperate with Him. But many times this is difficult for people. Many times it's hard to understand what does it mean to abide? How do I abide? What does this look like practically? How do I pull together with Christ in this yoke? In this video, I want to show you how you can pull with Christ, how you can abide in Him and stay connected with Him. Let's go to James 4, verse 7 and 8. It gives us a clue as to how this works. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Here we find the same type of wording again that we found in earlier scriptures. Abiding in Christ, resting in Christ, pulling the yoke together. Now the Bible says, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. It's the same thing, my friends. And how does this happen? Well, verse 7 gives us the answer. It says, submit to God and resist the devil. We need to submit to God. How important is it for us to live a surrendered life to Christ? A moment-by-moment moment surrendered life to Christ, that we may abide and stay abiding in Him. It is vitally important. And I want to show you how this works. And this will teach you and help you as it has helped me to abide in Christ and stay within Him so that I can find rest for my soul. Job also gives us some insight in Job 22, 21 and 22. Submit to God and be at peace with Him. Thereby good will come to you. Receive please instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. So Job says there are two important things here. Submit to God and lay his words in your heart and good will come to you. You will find peace. You will find the rest. So once again, we get the answer as to how this works. We need to submit to God and we need to submit to the word of God. Because the word of God is what is placed within my heart. That's what governs my life. That's how I live my life, by the principles of the Word of God. I believe this is the definition for perfect faith. Perfect faith is the surrender of your will to God and a simple trust in His pledged Word. So if I live by the Word of God and I've submitted to the Word of God, I would have the faith that I need. As Romans 10 verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the Word of God. So I need to submit to the principles of the Word of God. 
Why do I need to submit? Why is this important? Well, Isaiah 64 and verse 8 says, Our righteousness are like filthy rags. So I cannot trust myself. I need to be connected to the vine so that the fruits that I bear comes from Christ's nourishment and not my own thoughts and my own feelings. Then our only source of strength comes from Christ. As Christ said, without me, you can do nothing. And it's our only defense against evil. Because when we do do evil, when we give in to temptation, we sever the connection between us and God. That's why the Bible said in James 4 verse 7, Submit to God and resist the devil. So submission and our defense against evil goes hand in hand. An inspired author once said, The only defense against evil is the indwelling of Christ in the heart through faith in His righteousness. And that means we need to stay connected. The same author then goes on to say that through a surrender of ourselves to God, moment by moment, we stay connected to God. In the mornings when we wake up, we need to spend time with God. We need to surrender our lives to Him in the morning. But throughout the day, as we go through our busy days, we're doing work, we, we're witnessing to people, whatever we do, we need to stay connected to God. And how do we do that? How do we stay connected to the vine? How do we find peace and rest in Christ? No matter what comes my way, it's through a continual surrender of my will to Him. We will maintain a connection with God through a continual surrender of our wills. But the problem is we are sinful. We have inherited the sinful traits that comes right from the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned right up until our day. And listen to what Jeremiah 18 verse 12 says about our condition. And they said, that is hopeless. So we will walk according to our own plans and we will everyone obey the dictates of his evil heart. So what do most people do? They follow their own plans. They follow the dictates of their own heart, their evil hearts. And God says, no, you need to submit to me. But the question is, why do I submit? Why do I give to God? I've now laid the foundation to show how important this surrender is. A moment by moment surrender. It helps me to stay connected and abide in Christ. To find the rest and peace for my soul. But what do I surrender? Well, I surrender my thoughts and my feelings. Why do I need to surrender my thoughts and my feelings? Because your thoughts and your feelings makes up your moral character. You need to give yourself to God, your thoughts and your feelings, and your will, so that you can follow His plans. As Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 8 says, Trust in the Lord of all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Why? Because our understanding is based upon sin. It's based upon fallen humanity. But God's understanding is based upon perfection. It's based on purity, loveliness, kindness, gentleness, etc. The fruits of the Spirit. So when I surrender my thoughts and my feelings, I'm giving to God myself. My ugly self I'm giving Him. And He gives me His beautiful self. And therefore He can live His life through me and people can see Christ in me. Proverbs 23 verse 7 concurs and says, For as He thinks in His heart, so is He. So our thoughts and our feelings, what we think, that's who we are. It's our characters. And that's what we need to surrender to God. One time I went to Standard Bank. I used to live in a very small town called Refir Sonder End. Yes, that's a difficult name for our English viewers overseas, etc. In English, it's River Without End. That's the, what I just said was the Afrikaans name. And it's a very small town. It's only 1.2 kilometers long. That's very short. I mean, you sneeze and you threw the town. So the one day I went to the bank and normally when I go to the teller to draw money, the queue is short or there are no people because it's a small town. So when I came to the queue, there were four people in front of me. And I thought to myself, what? Can you believe it? Four people in front of me. But the important thing that day for me was that I was in a hurry and I didn't leave a lot of time between me getting to the teller and drawing money and at the same time being on time for my appointment because I didn't expect people to be at the teller. So here I'm at the teller. I've got an appointment. I'm in a super hurry. And there's a lady at the teller trying to draw money. And what I see is her card going into the machine and a card coming out of the machine. A card going back into the machine and a card coming back out of the machine. And I thought to myself, sure, this is highly frustrating. And I did something at that moment that God does not want us Christians to do. I walked out of the line and I looked at her and I went, Pfft. 
And I walked back to him to show her my irritation and frustration because she's taking long, I'm in a hurry, she's wasting my time. I didn't think all those words, but that's what it comes down to. When I came back in the line, another two gentlemen joined behind me and the Holy Spirit tapped me on the shoulder and said to me, Renier, it's not an audible voice, but the thoughts just came into my mind. Out of all the people in this line, I expect you to represent my character. Man, it felt like the earth could swallow me up like it did Korah. I stood there, I was like, Lord, I, I can't believe I just did this. The next thoughts came to my mind. I don't want you to do what this guy is going to do. The next guy then behind me walks out of the line, scolds at the lady, mentions her by name, embarrasses her in front of everyone, and then walks back in the line. You know what's the best of all? I got to draw the money and I was in time for my appointment. Was it necessary for me to act that way? Just imagine I preached that coming weekend. This lady for the first time comes to a Christian church and she walks into the church, then refers on their end. And I'm preaching and she sees me. What, what do you think she's going to think? I want nothing to do with your God. Your character does not represent the Almighty. Therefore, in this church, your God is not alive. And that was embarrassing for me. Well, God created another opportunity. It wasn't long after I was back in line trying to draw money and I was in a hurry to an appointment again. And you know what I did? I started singing. I've learned my lesson. All to Jesus, I surrender was the song that I sung. And I was free in that moment. I was resting in Jesus. And let's be honest with ourselves today. If Christ was literally standing next to me in his physical form that day, and this lady was taking so long, what would my reaction have been? I probably would have stood there, Oh, I'm so holy. <laughs> She's standing right next to me. Oh, I'm so holy. That's what I would have done. I'd be like, this, Jesus is right here. But Jesus said to his disciples, It's expedient that I go away, because I will send you another helper, the Holy Spirit, and he will abide with you forever. So the God is with us. His Holy Spirit is with us. So how can I practice this practically, this surrender? I told you what to surrender. Your thoughts and your feelings. Lord, I give to you my frustrations with this lady. I give to you my irritations. I give to you my, 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 my hastiness to get to my appointment. I give to you that. You give me your patience. You give me your calmness, your kindness, your gentleness. How do I do this? Well, I've got a formula, three steps. Number one, pause. Right there when those frustrations and irritations comes up, pause. The Bible says in Psalm 46 verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. Recognize God's presence right there with you. Before you say anything, before you react. The second thing that you do is stop or think. Isaiah 1 verse 18 says, Come, let us reason together. Reason with God. Lord, is it logical for me to do this now? And the answer is obviously no. Is it biblical? Lay up his words in your heart. The answer is no. Then submit to God. Lord, I surrender to you these things. I surrender to you what I feel. And then you play or you choose the right way. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 30, 19 and 20, I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you that I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. We must choose to do what is right in God's sight. We must play. We must choose those things that is right within the scriptures. Joshua 24, 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. We must choose, my friends. It is a choice. Surrender is not the magic wand. It is for you to make a choice in line with the word of God. 1 Kings 18, 21. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. We shouldn't falter on two opinions. We need to choose. Are we worshiping God, the real, the actual God? Or are we worshiping ourselves? And what I want and what I say is important. So let's suppose you have now given yourself to God. You're in the line there, but the irritation, the frustration is still there. What can you do that would help you to get out of this state and so that Christ can reign in the heart? Well, number one, you can sing. In Psalm 59 verse 17 says, To you, O my strength, I will sing praise, for God is my defense, my God of mercy. 
So sing. That's what I did the second time I was in the situation. I sang the song, I Surrender All, and I was liberated because God empowered me. The second thing that you can do is memorize scripture and bring those scriptures to memory when you're in the line. Psalm 119.11 says, Your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Bring the scriptures to mind that says that God will be with you. As Luke 11.13 says, You being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, but your heavenly Father knows what you need, and He will much more give you the Holy Spirit when you ask of Him. So you know you will be empowered through the Word of God. The third thing that you can do is pray. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, pray without ceasing. So bring your thoughts and your feelings in front of God. And the fourth thing that you can do is get out of the situation. If it's an argument, if it's whatever it is that you are finding yourself in, get out of the situation if possible. Because James 4 verse 7 says, resist the devil. Break the DVD if it's things you're watching you're not supposed to watch. Whatever it is, get out of the situation. These are some of the tools that can help you to rest and abide in Christ. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We need to bring all our thoughts to Christ. Every thought and feeling to obedience. But what is our natural inclination? Well, Psalm 81.11 says, But my people would not listen to me. Israel would not submit to me. My friends, it is a choice whether we want to submit to God or not. Our natural inclination, we don't want to submit. We want to do our own things and follow self. But we need to follow Christ, His example. Christ said in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, not my will be done, but your will be done. He said in John 4, 34, My food is to do the will of Him who sent me and to finish His work. Christ's life was dedicated, surrendered to the will of God. Continually, that's how Christ overcame. So fully was Jesus surrendered to the will of God that the Father alone appeared in His sight. The Father was His life's work, doing His will, and therefore Jesus could find joy and peace within this suffering world. And God says to us, it's the same way that you and I can have victory. Submit to God, resist the devil, and He will flee from you.